been on the west side now for over 20 years, and my question, I have two questions. One is, I appreciate the extra 370 low barrier beds, but what has happened to our high barrier shelter? I feel that people that are trying to maintain sobriety or have a family unit down at the Salvation Army, people need support from each other that are sober, and they have you know, resources there and social workers, but I'd like to know why the city hasn't invested money in a high barrier shelter to, a, to help those in need that have a good support system there. I personally uh, feel that the low barrier shelter seems to be a bit of a band-aid. I feel like it's a nightly shelter for folks. Um, like I said, I live on the west side, and as you said, President Swarman, everybody gets shooed out wherever they go at 7 a.m. And the reason they get shooed out is because at 8.30 in the morning at the Salvation Army and the Springs Rescue Mission, people have to be placed on the street. That's not gonna stop folks from camping, from hanging out, from loitering, from going in our backyards. I just feel like, what about the help for the people during the daytime? Um, okay. And what happened to the high barrier shelter that we had? Okay, so you're speaking about Salvation Army, RJ Montgomery Center. Yes. So they have agreed to become low barrier right. because it was clear that that is where the largest need was in our community. Now I agree with that decision, there are some consequences to that. But they are. It was a funding issue that they yeah. went from high barrier to low barrier. Exactly. So where was the funding to assist them to be to maintain their high barrier status? Okay. So without getting too into the details, because they're not here right now, right. Uh, federal funding uh, is uh, at least uh, the money that we're using for shelters in our town is for low barrier shelters. So uh, shelters that are running high barrier shelters are starting to lose funding from the federal government. So they did make the change so that they could continue operating. Because again, that is where the largest need is in our community. But I agree with you that we uh, need more family shelter spots in our town. But uh, high barrier shelters, just to reiterate, they sit empty sometimes in the winter. And we don't, we don't can, when we look at bed utilization rates, because we get that data, it's not a good use of taxpayer money to pay for empty beds. We wanna make sure that we're investing in shelters that actually are able to bring people in to get connected to services. I understand that, but I also know that that, that shelter is always full. I know that for a fact. So to me, it seems like this has become a revolving door. Folks get kicked out at 8.30 in the morning, they have been kicked out, but they're asked to leave, and then I just, I don't think this one is a solution the, during well, the one, daytime. One, one of the hopes of all this is that the Springs Rescue Mission has put together a day center. They, they have one already, but they're going to expand it, and they're also going to expand their meals. So right now, they can only serve 65 at a time. So uh, Marion House Soup Kitchen is still going to have its purpose of serving people, but more families and people that are in need at the end of the month. I don't know if you know, but at the end of the month, their count goes up to 1,000 because so many people are just, you know, they've, they've spent their paycheck, and now they're desperate to try to uh, get to the end of the month. But but you're right, there needs to be activities, it's job training, it's, it's ways for people to stay and have a daycare center to do their laundry, to take showers, and all that is, is a part of this whole picture that we need to really address, you're absolutely right. I'd just like to say one more thing. So, uh, do shake your head no at me if I'm saying something incorrect, but uh, uh, Springs Rescue Mission has a resource center currently and they're in the middle of phase two of their capital campaign to expand the campus, expand the dining facility. Uh, they're adding 150 shelter beds, but also what they're gonna be doing is expanding that courtyard where people hang out during the day and they're gonna fence off the entire property. Is that correct? And so that'll make uh, that location more of a destination for people to go be during the day because they have all the services. It's what's called a one-stop shop, which is a best practice nationally. People can go there, be there during the day. They don't have to go out under the streets during the day. They can remain on the campus during the day rates too. And they and all the services, I think there's over 50 service providers on your campus, right? 45. When I spoke with homeless folks, when I spoke with homeless folks, they've talked about how dangerous it is there at times with people that are under the influence, that there's been harassment, things of that nature. And I think that also prevents some people from going down there. And I'd like to know how our West Siders are gonna get down there. Is the city gonna help them get downtown? What about our side of town, Mr. Squarman especially? <laughs> yeah, I wanna say one thing about that. So they do have security at uh, Springs Rescue Mission, but you know, there are issues that happen. 
Um, and in regards to people camping on the west side, uh, I've learned my lesson about talking about sheltering on the west side of town, so I won't say that again. It's a really good point. You know, transportation's a huge issue. You know, the police department will, the hot team will take people to shelter, but it's not, you know, it's not their primary job and they can't be everywhere. And it's, a, and it's an absolute need. I, I hope uh, somehow we can get the church and the churches and the faith community to use some of their vans to help with this. But we need a lot more people on the ground. We really do.